this drop is uh you know pretty dope it's one of the first joints that put me on to understanding a little more about 432 so it's going to give you some uh you know some breadcrumbs you know what i'm saying give us some breadcrumbs to understanding the frequency war and uh yeah shout out to this cat i mean not everybody's in it to you know tell us we're on a spinning ball some people are saying we're not and for those that are saying we're not it's worth giving them at least a listen to see if they got the drop so let's check it out, uh, Cosmic 432. And shout out to, uh, you know what I'm saying, one of my big bros, man, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, Street Fam LG. Big LG was good, man. Uh, LG put me on to this years ago, before there was a 432 to drop, before there was a King drop, you know what I'm saying, all that kind of stuff, man. I mean, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, way back, man, before I even was picking up, uh, you know, any scripture again, you know what I'm saying, to understand it further to dig in it for the babies again you know it had been over a decade and he put me up on this and from then came the idea you know what I'm saying of 432 the drop so I always give LG love and, and credit and peace and uh, bless your family my man and uh, you know can't wait to reunite you know what I'm saying get everybody together man make it happen uh, shout out man I got to give some special love man you know like when I put LG out there I got to put out my homie Boog, Boogie What's good, man? I got to put out my homie Rizzle. Love all y'all. Miss all y'all, man. I know everybody's spread out with families doing their thing, but we got to reunite. All right? So uh, this is Cosmic432. And, uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Let go. Check this out. And I haven't seen this really since uh, LG dropped it years ago. And now we can see it with fresh eyes. If one should desire to know whether a kingdom is well governed, if its morals are good or bad, the quality of its music will furnish the answer. And that's from Confucius. So if you want to know if the kingdom you're in, or if this kingdom that you're looking at was good or bad, if they were getting their energy from above the firmament <laughs> all the way to the throne of Heia Heia the existence the energy itself all that was and will be that which we are re reuniting in and a part of if you want to know whether the kingdom is ro you're rocking in is good or bad the quality of his music will furnish the answer they ain't talking about if they got Patti LaBelle and Smokey Robinson, you know what I'm saying? You know, they ain't talking about, you know, if they got Michael Jackson and, you know, whoever, you know what I'm saying? They're saying, they ain't talking about Drake. They're talking about the quality, the actual vibration, the actual quality of the vibration of the music. The frequency of the music will be good. So if you want to know if you're in a good or bad kingdom, you got to know, are they, do they got you in 432? Is that what's coming out your radio? Or is it the McDonald's garbage trash of frequencies, the distorted frequency, the anxious frequency, the deceit, deceptive frequency, 440 hertz. That is the frequency of deception on this plane of existence. That is the frequency of the illusion. All right. So that's how you know if you're in a good or bad kingdom, what frequency is coming out your radio. Once you wake up to that, you'll know. Confucius meant about the quality of music when he says it's based upon the quality of its music he wasn't talking about what kind of genre the music was in. he wasn't talking about whether it was rap or country rock and roll gospel or jazz what he was referring to when he met the the uh, uh the quality of its music was I just gotta you know because I'm staring at this and it's annoying I don't know if it's supposed to be earth or whatever the case is but this is all fiction these are all drawings they don't have this don't we just saw a frequency of the stars. We know that these are lights. This is not terraforma. They want us to think we're on one ball full of lots of little balls and we're so small and the Most High has all these balls and they're all spinning.
and they have people on them. And that's Copernican. That is not our <laughs> reality. That is not our habitat. So I just got to, you know, shout that out so you don't get... This is an image. So you're staring at this. There's still an image being put. And I want to make that disappear. Just focus on what he's saying again. This is not the guy that's head of music. He's not the guy getting paid off of all these, off of your talent. You got our Rihanna's and all this kind of stuff, and you put our our people, our talent, our beautiful frequency naturally, you put them in 440 hertz and give it to us in McDonald's trash. Not him, but them. He's telling you it's trash. He's telling you you need to know what frequency you're on. So that's why I'm like, all right, well, give us the drop. What frequency was that music being played in? And what mathematical intervals was that? Was the, uh, the difference between the, uh, the frequencies? You see, that was absolutely crucial. For thousands of years during the Chinese dynasties, uh, the emperors would send out teams of people all over the kingdom to make sure that the, that the, uh, the people were playing music in the, rock, in the right frequency, the wow. proper frequencies with the proper interval. They had strict guidelines about the music that was being played because the emperor knew that if you had different factions of different kingdoms playing different types of music, different frequencies of music, that all those different realms would soon be at strife and, and against one another. Uh -huh. So it was imperative whoa, that... Whoa, whoa. Different kingdoms playing different frequencies, right? So we're off the 432 in this kingdom and many other kingdoms. Research how they got there. Research the British Standard Institute, the International Standards Institute, all the times when they, all the steps to get there before 1951 when they made it real official. But they had musicians, even in the, Italy and France, petitioning to keep it at 432. And you'll see why. So you have all these kingdoms in different frequencies and it develops what? Let's break it down. Back it up. That if you had different factions of different kingdoms playing different types of music, different frequencies of music, that all those different realms would soon be at strife and, and against one another. War. War, so war, it war. imperative that the entire kingdom played music in, in tune with one another. And America has been at war over 90, over 95 percent of the existence of this corporation. They set specific and strict guidelines of, of what frequency was this music to be played at. So 2,500 years uh, uh, or actually 4,500 years ago, the Chinese were using uh, the vibration of music uh, to control the people. Wow. Now, let's fast forward to today. Now, what do we know about today's music? What do we know about what tuning our music is in, and where did this tuning come from? Okay. Standard concert pitch today is 440 hertz. That's what they made standard by the International Standards Institute. Now, for thousands of years, the ancients used... 432 hertz. Why? Let's get the drop. Sorry for the shaky camera. I just, you know, this is my setup. I gotta hold it. Video is to improve your knowledge of musical vibration. I mean, what do we really know about music? The air vibration of its sounds are physical, measurable. Yes, we know that a singer can shatter a glass with their trained voice. Troops marching across a bridge in unison have been known to collapse that bridge unless they break their rhythm before marching across it. Mm. Even subsonic vibrations which precede an earthquake can cause animals to become disoriented, mm. thus driving them from the area. I mean, we are dealing with a very impressive force. Today, extensive research has shown that music can speed or slow your heart rate, relax or jar your nerves, affect your blood pressure, digestion, even your rate of respiration. And I'm sure I don't... All this affects your entire ecosystem, your entire body, your entire balance. Music, sound is the most important thing because everything is sound. Everything is vibration moving through this medium. medium. So which one are you on? Which one are you going to choose? If you continue in this kingdom, in that frequency, it will destroy you. You won't be able to wake up and really get things that you really should be getting by now. It's the frequency blocking you. Pretty soon, I agree, man, we're going to have to throw out all our TVs and laptops pretty soon because they're bombarding us with all these microwaves and, and frequencies through these things that we think we need. We become addicts. We become addicted to technology. All right, so he's, you know, breaking down how the music affects the health. 
don't trip on him. Clearly, he's reading, but he's reading drop, and that's the most important thing. So focus on the drop. <laughs> I know it's uh, a little distracting. I have to tell you that music can also but you can do it. Let's go. Desires. It can have a very significant influence on your mental processes, and in turn, can influence an entire society as the Chinese knew over 4,000 years ago. So, where did the frequency of today's music come from? Just about the entire modern world uses the standard concert pitch of A equals 440 hertz. Now, what this means is, on a piano, for example, the A above middle C is tuned to 440 hertz. And all the rest of the notes uh, are tuned around this frequency. But the problem with this is there's absolutely nothing harmonious, either biologically or cosmically, with the 440 hertz frequency. So Whoa. why are we using it? Why are we using it? In many cultures, this tone is used in connection with sacred rituals. In India, this tone is called Saja, father of others, and the sitar and tambura are tuned accordingly. In Sufism, it is said the one who knows the secret of this tone knows the mystery of the universe. The shamanic festival use of a specific series of drums, trumpets, and harps in ancient Sumeria had them all tuned to 432 hertz. Mm. The original Stradivarius violin was designed to be tuned to 432 hertz as well. Mm. The archaic Egyptian instruments that have been unearthed so far are largely tuned to 432 hertz. 432 hertz. So again, they're pulling the instruments out of Egypt in 432. So I just did the drop um, uh, regarding frequency and another video, you know, saying that the Great Pyramids, um, one of the king's chambers is, is tuned to 440 hertz. And, you know, so we said, is there an artificial grid? You know, saying this is what we're, we're looking at. Do they have the, <laughs> the technology... And this energetic sound tech, you know, technology that we're calling pyramids, this acoustic technology, you know, what I'm saying this amplifying of energy, you know, uh, system to tune in different frequencies. You know, I don't say, oh, because they found this this particular area tuned to 440, it could be a mistake, it could, it could be misinformation, or, you know. They could have the ability to do 440 and 4... Clearly, if they can do 440, then they know what 432 is. And as you see right here, a lot of the instruments were in 432. So, could these... Could there... I'm just throwing some stuff out there. Could the people have been in that 432? And could the ruling parties been, you know, putting that 440 on? Just like Hitler did, you know, with his subjects. He put the 440 on them. You could research that. He experimented with the 440 as far as these, Europe, these are Europeans know first. He got that from ancient technology and systems, of course, from melanated people. Of how to control people based on frequencies. And we're. So if they're bumping 440 to us, their instruments, the elite's instruments, could easily be in 432 since they know the difference. They're probably eating the organic stuff, having the organic meal, eating the organic frequency. So you're still going to find instruments tuned to 432, you know what I'm saying? Because those that knew, knew. Yet the technology was there, possibly, to also tune an area to 440. If they wanted to subjugate or target a particular people in that area. And that's pretty cool. Let's go touches the full 12 scale octave overtones of all music in creation whereas 440 hertz only touches eight octave overtones leaving out an entire section of the complete music. I want to back up what he just said for those musicians that know this. To 432 hertz as well. The archaic Egyptian instruments that have been unearthed so far are largely tuned to 432 hertz. 432 hertz touches the full 12 scale octave overtones of all music in creation Whereas 440 hertz only touches eight octave overtones, leaving out an entire section of the complete musical resonance of the So it's earth. skipping all that vibration. The diameter of the moon is 2,160 miles, which is 432 times. I don't rock with this information, because this is all their own uh, pseudo, you know, science stuff. I rock with Enoch when he says the moon is 32 miles, the sun is 32 miles. Yet, 
here's the interesting thing. Even in their deceptive mathematics, they still had to base it off the same principle. So the math adds up in their model, the Copernican model, the math adds up the same way the math adds up in, you know, a so-called flat earth model where the sun is only a few thousand uh, feet away, not 96 million miles. Again, you can see amateur balloon experiments with the sun right on top of the clouds, leaving a hot spot. A sun cannot leave a hot spot from 96 million miles away. I don't care how big it is. It will be coming at us, you know, saying from all angles or, you know, from a large uh, area, not a hot spot, a targeted area on top of the clouds. So I suggest, like the Book of Enoch suggests, the sun is only a few thousand miles away, 32 miles in diameter. The moon is also 32 miles in diameter. It's all within the firmament. Fir firmament. And, you know, when you see your eclipses, it's just one. They're both the same size, so one covers the other one, you know. But that's 32 miles, you know, and that's how it is. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, even their math adds up in the Copernican uh, model, which is how they have really tricked us mathematically let's go that's how they got our vi vibration the off of there of the sun is mathematic deception miles, which is see times two. they can still use the, the 432 in that the zodiac equinoxes takes 25,920 years or simply 432 times 60 half of a day or 12 hours is 720 minutes or 432,000 seconds that's interesting the harmonic 6 of the 432 is 720 hertz hmm. There were 432 Buddha statues at Mount Merrill and okay. 72 stupas. Hmm. A healthy athletic adult at rest has an average heart rate of 60 beats per minute. So 60 times 60 minutes in an hour times 24 hours in a day equals 86,000. That's the math, man. Day, it's going to keep breaking down. 4 plus 3 plus 2 is 9. Even if you know the 9s, you know. One of the sporting goods manufacturers produces a special series of golf balls that Tiger Woods uses that features a 432 dimple configuration. How do they come to that? Well, several decades ago, a group of engineers inputted all the various parameters of golf wow. ball design into a computer in order to determine the optimum amount of dimples on the surface, wow. which can effectively reduce drag and give more loft and distance to the ball. Geometry. It is obvious not only to Nike, but to other leading sporting good manufacturers as well, that the acoustical geometry of the 432 allows for optimal harmonic performance. Mathematics. So they obviously knew that the 432 was embedded. Don't be afraid of math. We've been taught religiously that certain things are oh my gosh it's too geometric it must be evil no evil twisted our math evil means twisted all right evil means out of order when you look at the etymology of, of what's really going on it's not evil like ah, it's out of order either you're in order you're out of order either you're in chaos or you're in order that's why the scripture said the worst thing you could be is lukewarm choose choose all right, so this is your mathematics, and it's been twisted, but you need to know it for yourself to free yourself. Let's go. In the very workings of the cosmos, for example, it takes 25,920 years for a complete procession of the equinoxes. That's one complete cycle of the zodiac. Today we are leaving the age of Pisces and entering the age of Aquarius, so there are 12 ages in one 25,920-year cycle. And if you multiply the 432 by, by 60, you get 25,920. This is an important point because 60 is the base measurement of how we count time. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, etc. It was also the base counting system for the ancient Sumerians. So, the procession of the equinoxes mm. and the 432 literally are revealing the timing of the pulse of life. Wow. These fractal cosmic now let's get some of that back. I know we got a lot to do, but there's going to be a little bit of that back. we count time. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, etc. It was also the base counting system for the ancient Sumerians. So, the procession of the equinoxes and the 432 literally are revealing the timing of the pulse of life. Deal with it. These fractal cosmic relationships are ingrained into every experience all life forms have. It is the reason behind why the builders at Mount Mero put only 432 Buddha statues. Simply, our higher consciousness is being harmonically inspired to acoustically resonate with the overall frequency of the cosmos. Now, for example, let's take one of the most infamous numbers in the Bible, the 666, which is said to be the number of man. 
And let's look at a quote by the ancient philosopher Pythagoras, which states, man is two octaves below God. Now, if we go back to the 666, and what if we uh, interpret that to mean 6 times 6 times 6? If we do that, we get 216, which is half of the 432, or one octave below the 432. So if man is the 216, and the 432 would represent enlightened consciousness Woo. by the 432 Buddha statues, then one octave above Love would be 264, or the level of God. My goodness. So the 432 is the vibrational level we're all moving towards. <laughs> I haven't seen this, man, in years. And some kept telling me, man, go back to the root of, of what sparked the whole journey as far as uh you know looking into the frequency and where it's brought us today all of us here that are uh on this journey you know what i'm saying with me with us it is we without we there is no redemption all right we got to bring that back because now we're just talking mathematics we're breaking it down to energy frequency vibration and it's breaking us back to our creator and what did he just kick about being two octaves below? Alright. So if that's the 216. If that's our base. Then we're trying to get to 432 consciousness. And then the octave above that. Above the vibrational layer. Above the firmament. Is another octave. And that is when you are now in the frequency. For real. On the octave. For real. And I'm saying that that will be our rebirth. Yes, Israel. Yes, Israel. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm, I'm just too excited right now. Israel, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Kwam Yasharala. That is the rebirth of the entire, uh, you know, earth. Everybody that's choosing up. You ain't this bloodline, you that bloodline. Just choose up. Because we're about to go into another octave. Right now, we're just trying to get into the consciousness, the 432 hertz. Perhaps that will be the frequency of the new Jerusalem or the the new, the real new world, right? When the earth is renewed into a higher octave of frequency. The mother earth is the womb. The womb is weary. She's tired. But she will be put in another frequency. So you can interpret that to be the 432 and then the octave of your creators an octave above that. Let's go. I need to get that back. So according to the ancient Don't do me like that. And let's look at a quote by the ancient philosopher Pythagoras, which states, man is two octaves below God. Now if we go back to the 666, and what if we uh, interpret that to mean six times six times six? If we do that, we get 216, which is half of the 432, or one octave below the 432. So if man is the 216 and the 432 would represent enlightened consciousness by the 432 Buddha statues, then one octave above would be 864 or the level of God. So the 432 is the vibrational level we are all moving towards. So according to the ancient Christian text, the creator spoke through the authors of the Bible and they simply... Not ancient Christian text. <laughs> Whatever they're calling ancient and Christian, that's 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 the twist. It's, they got you with round balls in the background to keep you on the ball. So he's giving you some drop, but he's still keeping you spinning on the ball. So you're not really able to firmly. So I'm, I'm telling you to block the images out so you can get the drop firm, fixed, and immovable drop. Standing firm on your plane that you're on with everything spinning above you. Okay. And he just, you know, said the Christian thing. Of course, we know we're talking about. Hebrews. Let's go. Wrote the words down. So if these are the actual words of God, then encoded in them could be some hidden patterns or even possibly some deeper insight into the underlying messages. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. When studying this topic, it turns out that a man named Vernon Jenkins found exactly that. In 1987, Mr. Jenkins, a well-respected lecturer at the University of Glamorgan, developed a system to reveal hidden patterns found within the original Hebrew text of Genesis. Okay. This process was to transpose the numerical value of the letters using the Arabic numeral system. He then used those numbers to determine a certain quantity of geometries, and his results were simply stunning. What you're seeing right now in this first uh, graphic is a 216-unit outline triangle, and I actually replicated his work in a graphics program to see if, if he was correct to verify his work. And in this graphic depiction, you see 216 units, 216 
uh, squares or boxes that are all lined up perfectly to create a 216 unit outline triangle. So what Vernon Jenkins did was he took the first words of Genesis 1 through 7 in this graphic and you see in the beginning Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Now Let's in the pause it. Pause it yourself. I know I got some Hebrew scholars out there. I knew you I know you was wondering where I was going with this. And I told you it always it's always gonna be brought back home. It's always gonna be brought back home. Whether we're talking about the flat earth, no, nah, we're talking about your habitat that was created by Haya. Alright? Your creator, your breath. That's what flat earth really means. It's your habitat that was created by your creator. That has rules and regulations. We're supposed to give the land rest every seven years so the crops can, you know what I'm saying, replenish. Replenish and harvest correctly to be balanced. We don't give the land a Sabbath, a Shabbat, a break, a resting period. These are timing, mechanisms, mathematics for creation. Mathematics. When you look up phi, P-H-I, in math that breaks down to, you know, what they call the the symbol of the creator in mathematics because you can't, you know, it is the building block to it all. Phi, right? Phi, the golden ratio, phi. All right, so, you know, study this. Let me know your thoughts. Beginning represents to uh, 913, Elohim 86. Now, there's some contention about whether Elohim or God are the same thing. There's a difference uh, in translation. But created is 203. And the asterisk you see is, represents 401, which doesn't have a direct uh, translation in English. The heaven is 395 and 407, the earth 296, uh. which equals 2701. So in the original 216 outline triangle, we can fill that perfectly with 2701 units Whoa. in the same outline. And in the next one, words 6 and 7, and the earth have a numerical equivalent of 703. Sorry, in this graphic, you see blurry. a 703 triangle inset in the original 216 outline triangle. But one of the things to note is that all of the resultant three yellow triangles that you see all have 666 units each, <laughs> which I thought was pretty interesting. Oh, man, in that's true. We have words I know somebody's going to dig on that. The heaven and the earth and the earth. Man, it's blurry. I don't know why. Sorry, 1801. In this graphic, we see an 1801 hexagon inset in the original 216 outline triangle. And one of the other things to note is that each side has 25 units. The perimeter is 144 units, and there one, are 49 four, four. rows, which all are perfect squares. 144. Four. The next one comes from Genesis. Oh, man. They're trying to cut us down. Yeah, my internet. <laughs> my internet. My internet. Yeah, they've been jabbing me up. I've been trying to, uh, this is my third time trying to do this video, and they keep just cutting my signal out on me. So I try to get through as much as I can. Hopefully, I can just reload it quickly. If not, I'll leave the link, and you can uh, keep it keep it flourishing, my people. Yeah, it looks like they got me on the jam jam. These people playing, man. They're trying to get in between. This is the static. This is the static, all right? This is the 440 hertz. <laughs> it's not peaceful. It's distorted. It causes strife, division. We're coming back home. We're coming back home. All right. So, I love y'all. Stay up, suit up, choose up. You know what I'm saying? Don't let the suckers get you down. You know. Oh, this is pretty cool. I've been wanting to drop this. You know, every time we talk about our indigenous, indigenous, uh, you know, family and everything else, man. Um, this is George. Caitlin, Caitlin, Caitlin. This is the code. Uh, he, he was one of the first, uh, I believe, painters of the indigenous people of the Americas. And let's see what he says. I'll keep it steady here. Let's see. Uh, how about that? I'll just read. I know it's kind of small. All primitive, all primitive tribes, people known in America, dark are dark copper colored dark copper colored not even just red you know they're, they're dark copper colored <laughs> shades of brown all right with jet black hair uh catlin also notes hair texture most possess curls in the extreme 
in parentheses nappy hair and on every level of wavy hair in between can y'all see that my bad i know i'm gonna close okay i think that's a better picture sorry about that i'm still learning man i'm still trying to get it for you so i'll say it again all prim all primitive tribes people known in america are dark copper colored shades of brown with jet black hair catlin also notes te hair texture most possess curls in the extreme so all those images you see in all these you know, everybody has straight hair. Where's your straight hair? Yeah, you got straight hair. You know, nah. Most possessed curls right here in the extreme. Nappy hair and every level of wavy hair in between. Hair is fine and soft or coarse and harsh. Some have straight hair. Most did not. Some Indians are very tall and large. As much as seven feet tall, while others are very short and small, but generally tall and straight of a comely proportion, shades of brown. When they are of any age, they are born light. Early Spanish explorers noted the race of indigenous people called Indians was extremely diverse, not just in appearance, but also in many aspects. Eyes can be gray, hazel, blue, green, with a variety of complexions ranging from very dark to very dark brown, almost like half-breeds, like, almost like they're mixed, <laughs> but almost, almost like half-breeds, right? So you're saying these people weren't mixed, that had hazel eyes and green eyes, and that was just part of, you know what I'm saying, what, what was it in the phenotypes of that, which they found that was not mixed with them, okay? So when you see all that, don't automatically assume because you see a brother or a sister you know what I'm saying with different color eyes or different shades you know whatever oh you must be mixed that's not what these historians are saying the people that were here that saw the original people here so I just want to shout out uh, um, somebody dropped this on me um, but I know my man um, my man Harem Art been doing a lot with this book the Black American Handbook you know what I'm saying so definitely uh, look into that you know what I mean? I'll put this link on there for y'all. My Dr. Redeen. Uh, check it out, man. So, check it out. That's who you are. Most possess hair in the curls to the extreme. And we got on this before, of course. You know, they always got these images. This is not what they were talking about, right? This is not what they were talking about. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you, whatever little images they try to get us with, you know what I'm saying? That's not it. So, but definitely, you know, check out this uh, drop. I'll drop it again to our Native American Indian music co compilation 432 Hertz. So somebody got the drop. That ain't me. So people got the drop. It just hasn't been brought to our community yet. And we're always the last to get the drop, especially when it belonged to us to begin with. But this is dope. In this, they break down, you know what I'm saying, around the 40, you know, all throughout it. They're just, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, singing praise to the creator. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, singing praise. They said, hey, yeah, in times of war, when they're about to, you know, get at you, they said, hey, yeah, when they're praising. And uh, again, you know, my internet's tripping, but, you know, it's in 432 hertz. So, you know, somebody got the drop, you know what I'm saying? Now you got the drop. We got the drop. You got the drop. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it goes, man. So love to y'all. Peace to y'all. Definitely check out this book, man, The Black American Handbook, The Survival in the 21st Century. Love to everybody, man, that's been uh, tuning in. Sorry we couldn't get through the whole video, but I'll leave the links to part one and two so you can get the drop take notes and see what we're talking about man when we break it back down to mathematics simplicity energy frequency vibration we out